This is our guy, Charlie, a man on a mission to instill in his students the power of a well-crafted body of an essay. But the irony is, body is something Charlie has completely disregarded in his own life. Charlie is a lonely, morbidly obese man who never leaves the comfort of his home or, to be more precise, his couch. He is looked after by his best friend Liz, a nurse at the local hospital. He is divorced and estranged from his ex-wife and child, spending his life binge-eating and teaching the importance of writing. One day, a sudden knock on the door frightens Charlie, sending him into hyperventilation and labored breathing as if he were having a heart attack. The young man at the door, Thomas, is afraid at the sight in front of him and offers to call the ambulance. Living in the U.S. and afraid of health care bills, Charlie refuses the ambulance and requests Thomas to read out an essay about Moby Dick instead. Confused but determined to not let the man die, Thomas begins to read a paragraph from the sheet. Charlie seems to be getting calmer as the paragraph comes to an end. Seeing this, Thomas sets down the essay and once again asks if he can call an ambulance. Charlie yet again refuses but does ask Thomas to pass him his phone, which fell to the ground. He calls up Liz, seeing how she is responsible for his medical assistance. While the two wait, Thomas asks Charlie why he made him read out the essay, but is given a very vague answer, getting the hint that his prying is not welcomed. Liz comes running into the house, worried for her friend's life. She makes sure his vitals are okay. She is concerned seeing his extremely high blood pressure and wheezing breathing, as she knows that he is affected by congestive heart failure. Charlie ignores her requests to go to the hospital, as he does not have insurance. Wanting to get away from Liz's pestering, Charlie excuses himself and goes to use the washroom. He is extremely large and needs a walker to stand and move around. In this scene, when he hurls himself from the couch, his body resembles that of the titular whale after it breaks through the water surface. It is unsettling yet magnificent at the same time. Presented with a moment alone with Thomas, Liz interrogates the young man. She finds out that he is in fact a missionary from a church called New Life, which is headed by Liz's adoptive father, Doug. New Life Church has caused her and Charlie much pain in the past, and she does not want Charlie to be subjected to this in his final days, not when New Life is already responsible for his boyfriend's death. Liz reminds Charlie over and over again that without proper medical assistance, he will die. But Charlie is stubborn. No amount of badgering and pleading will make him change his mind. Liz eventually gives up, and the two start watching TV together. Even though he has just been informed about how fatal his condition is, Charlie requests Liz to go grab him a large bucket of deep-fried chicken. Charlie has been really lonely ever since his boyfriend Alan passed away. He filled the goal left in his life by binge-eating, his figure becoming so bad that he needs help of wall hangings to help him get into bed, as well as a stick to help him pick up things that fall to the ground or are away from him. He gets a daily delivery of pepperoni pizza from a local chain called Gambino's, but never once has he opened the door to the delivery man. He keeps the money in the mailbox and requests the pizza be left on the bench outside the door. He is well aware of how he might be perceived by people and is ashamed of himself. The essay about Moby Dick which Thomas had read out to him is a sort of a coping mechanism for Charlie. He knows the essay by heart and recites it over and over again when he feels the need to calm his nerves. Worried about his condition, Charlie begins to Google his chances of living. Seeing how low they are, he turns to his chocolate drawer and hogs down a chocolate bar, and then one more, and then one more. Suddenly, he realizes that he cannot let his emotions get the best of him. He simply must accept his fate and make the most of whatever time he has left. In a final attempt to depart from his sad life with some purpose, he decides to make things right with his 16-year-old daughter, Ellie. He had abandoned Ellie and her mother Mary when she was just a young 8-year-old child to live a life with Alan, who was at the time one of his students. This has left Ellie bitter towards her father and the world in general. Her mother took the divorce pretty badly as well and had become an alcoholic, leaving Ellie a mean-spirited teenager with no qualms about mocking her father's condition. Despite Ellie's curt behavior, Charlie is determined to better his relationship with his daughter. When he finds out that she is flunking out of school, he offers to help her rewrite her essays for English class. However, as this is not a sure way to make sure that Ellie visits regularly, Charlie also bribes her with all the money that he has in the bank account for her. 
She agrees even though she is very upset with her father because while she needs the money, she does not want to write her own essay. Before leaving, Ellie demands that her father stand up and walk towards her without any support to prove his love for her. She pulls away his walker and forces him to try walking on his own. Charlie tries very hard to do so, but fails really badly. Disappointed by this, Ellie storms out the door, leaving him wheezing and gasping for air. When Liz comes to visit and check up on Charlie's health, she gives him a machine that will track his stress levels. She also finds an essay with Ellie's name on it. Seeing that Charlie has been trying to reconnect with his daughter, who he has zero custodial rights over, makes Liz very mad and paranoid. She makes him promise that he will not call her over again. He meekly says, okay, to put her mind at ease. Liz hands a meatball sub to Charlie for dinner and begins clearing the dishes in the kitchen sink. He bites into his sub and while thinking about a ton of stressful things, forgets to chew properly. He starts to choke on his food. Liz sees this and immediately rushes over to force the food out of his windpipe. She gives him a big punch on his back and the food comes out. This incident scares the hell out of both the friends and they resume their work in complete silence. The next day, Charlie is preparing the house for Ellie's visit. He is looking for a notebook for Ellie to write her thoughts in when he stumbles upon a framed picture of him and Alan. With a faint smile and fond memories rushing into his mind, he decides to finally open the bedroom that has been locked for a while now. He tries to reach for the key, but it ends up slipping out of his hand and falling under a cabinet, making it impossible for him to retrieve it. Charlie gives up and waits for Ellie to show up. Once she arrives, he starts reviewing her essay about Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, one of the world's most renowned pieces of poetry, famous for its celebration the poet's self and its relation with nature. Ellie, to say the least, does not see the depth of it, instead calling it a piece of crap. This causes Charlie to realize just how cynical his beautiful and chirpy daughter has become. He still tries to find hope in the cynicism. Seeing little chance in getting Ellie interested in the poem, he starts asking her more general questions. While very reluctant at first, she tells him about her mom and that they have shifted to a new house. Then, well, it is only fair that she be allowed to ask Charlie questions as well, right? So she asks him why and how he had gained so much weight. He tells her that he started gaining weight after someone close to him passed away. Ellie bluntly cuts him off by saying, your boyfriend recalling the one dinner where Charlie had made steaks for Alan, Ellie, and himself. He is shocked to learn that she remembers this still. He requests Ellie to write a few of her thoughts in a notebook and excuses himself to go to the washroom. The day has been very tough for him. He has had to deal with a lot of triggering moments that have all made him relive the loss of his partner. Charlie starts to sob in the washroom to let out his feelings. While he is in there, someone knocks on the door. Ellie opens it to find Thomas back at his evangelical quest. She lets him into the house and asks him who he is. He tells her that he is a missionary from New Life Church and he is here to spread Jesus' message. She brushes it off as a bunch of bullshit and tells him to meet her tomorrow at the same time in the house. Charlie exists the passageway of his house and while doing so, hears the click of Ellie taking a photo. She leaves the house, leaving Thomas and Charlie alone. Thomas explains how he believes in the coming of the end of the world and the possibility of Christ coming back to life. Charlie tells him that he has read everything ever published by New Life and that he simply does not believe in this. Thomas is persistent in wanting to help Charlie, so Charlie asks him to get the key from under the cabinet for him. The key is retrieved and the bedroom is finally opened. While the two of them are talking about new life, Liz comes to Charlie's house and is furious to see the missionary there. She at first commands Thomas to leave, but then asks him to stay on for a little chat. Liz has brought a wheelchair for Charlie. It is a simple, custom-made wheelchair which was ordered for another patient. Since the patient had passed away, it was lying around at the hospital. Liz then pulls Thomas out and begins to tell him about all the pain and suffering that new life has caused both her and Charlie. She tells him about her adoptive parents who run the New Life Foundation. Her elder brother, Alan, was also one of the missionaries. He had been sent to South America for some work. There, he learned that their father had arranged his marriage to a good, decent Christian girl. He did not want that. He was gay and did not want to ruin his or anyone else's life by committing to a girl. Once he returned to Idaho, he met Charlie and the two fell in love. 
However, the religion and the teaching of the church had become a plague for him, and he could never get over it. Alan stopped eating and eventually went missing. A few days after his disappearance, his body washed up to the shore of the beach. Charlie can hear that Liz is crying by the end of the story. Thomas, left weary and afraid by what he had just learnt, runs away. After Liz leaves as well, Charlie enters the locked bedroom, which belonged to Alan while he was alive. The room still smells like him, which is a comforting feeling for Charlie. At dinner, he decides to take a look at what his daughter wrote in the notebook. There are only three lines in it. This apartment smells, this notebook is retarded, and I hate everyone. Seeing that his talented daughter had lost all her creativity saddens Charlie, but he still ends up laughing about what little she has written. The next day, Ellie is back at the apartment to pick up her finished essay. Charlie makes an effort to connect with his daughter yet again by apologizing for leaving her and attempting to justify his actions. However, Ellie is not interested in any of it. She has been left frustrated and deeply hurt by his actions, and nothing he could say would change that. He again tries to tell her how he always wanted to be a part of her life, but her mother never let him. To change the topic, Ellie offers to make him a turkey sandwich. Charlie, hopeful from the gesture, does not notice her adding two sleeping pills into the meal. After a few hours, Thomas comes knocking at the door. Ellie is smoking pot and offers some to him as well. He informs her that he used to be an addict and doesn't smoke anymore. She pressures him to have some anyway and then starts asking him about new life and everything related to him becoming a missionary. It is revealed that new life actually no longer does door-to-door -door services. Ellie catches him in a lie and demands to know the truth about him. Though reluctant at first, Thomas comes clean about himself. He did, in fact, come to Idaho as a missionary, just not with new life. When he realized that his church group was not making any difference in the life of people, he stole whatever petty cash there was and ran away. He is now scared to contact his parents back in Iowa because of the shame he has caused them. While telling Ellie all this, he comes across a Bible which once belonged to Alan. Ellie has recorded this entire conversation and is planning to expose him. As they finish talking, Liz and Mary enter the house. Thomas gets scared and runs away. Ellie is in great trouble for giving her father sleeping pills, as they could have been fatal for him. Mary is furious at Charlie for going behind her back, though she knows her daughter enough to know that she had some reason to be there as well. She asks Charlie if he has told her about the money, a fact that deeply shocks Liz. Liz has been under the impression that Charlie had no money at all. She is hurt by this news, because if he had the money, he could have gotten the medical help that he needed all along. Disappointed by the lie her best friend told her, she leaves the apartment. Ellie, in a fit of anger, yells at her mother and tells her father that she does not care if he is alive or dead. Even though this hurts Charlie, he still reminds her to take the essay he wrote for her before she leaves. Mary is shocked at the condition of her ex-husband and upset that he has decided to give Ellie the money at such a young age. Between the two parents, Charlie still has some hope for Ellie, while Mary has completely given up. She believes that her daughter is a monster and uses examples of her trolling people on Facebook as proof of it. Apart from talking about their daughter, the two reminiscence about the nice moments of their marriage. Even though it is a few years too late, Mary gives Charlie condolences for Alan's untimely death. They also share a heartwarming moment in which Mary reveals her concern for him. Mary also tells Charlie that she is embarrassed that their daughter has turned out the way she has and that this is the reason she has kept Ellie away from him for so long. She pleads him to stay away from her, but he refuses. He wants to make sure he has done one good thing in his life before he dies. The two get into an argument and Mary leaves before it can escalate any further. As clockwork, Charlie's daily delivery of pizza from Gambino's arrives and his regular delivery man, Dan, leaves the meal on the bench. However, today, when he goes out to collect the pizza, Charlie notices that Dan has not left and instead waited for him to come out. Dan simply scoffs at the sight of the obese man, which irritates Charlie. He spirals down and starts to eat everything in sight. Turkey, mayo, chocolate, pizza, everything. This binge eating makes him very sick, and he ends up throwing up. He hates himself and starts crying because of this. Charlie is quickly forced to compose himself as Thomas comes knocking at the door to tell him some news. As it turns out, Ellie sent the pictures of Thomas and the recording of his confession to his missions minister and his parents. He expected his parents to be furious with him, 
but instead, they accept his flaws and ask him to return home. Charlie is happy to hear that his daughter saved someone's life. Thomas tells Charlie that there is a way that he can be saved too. He recites a verse from the Bible and advises Charlie to seek salvation from the body that his spirit resides in. He tells him that Alan chose to be homosexual instead of being loyal to God, which led to his sad demise. But it is not too late for Charlie. All he has to do is to ask for forgiveness and abandon his body. His soul can be saved. Blaming Alan's death on his orientation is not something Charlie can tolerate. He gets angry and starts to tell Thomas private details about his and Alan's relationship, leaving the young man unsure and uncomfortable. He further says that he prays there is no afterlife, because he does not want Alan to have seen what he had become after his death. In the course of all of this, Thomas has an outburst and confesses to thinking that Charlie is absolutely disgusting. Charlie silently hands over the Holy Bible to Thomas and asks him to leave his house at once. In his sorrow and anger, he puts up a notification on the college portal, commanding students to finally write something honest. The following day, when he is teaching his class, Charlie reads out a few noteworthy, honest responses from his students. Appreciating their candor, he chooses to be honest with them as well and switches on his camera for the first time ever. He shows his students who he is in all of his vulnerability and then ends class by slamming his laptop into a wall. The broken electronics make for a worrisome sight for Liz when she brings food for Charlie. She can sense that her friend's time is ticking and tries to make the most out of this interaction, as it can be their last one. She does, however, mention to him that she will never forgive him for putting her through all the stress and torture, similar to how Alan had done before. In a moment of honesty, Charlie confessed to blaming himself for Alan's death. He always thought his love would be enough for Alan, but it clearly was not. Despite everything, Liz tells him that he was the only reason that Alan lived a few more years, and she never doubted what her brother meant to him. As the two friends are talking, Ellie comes screaming into the house, saying that the teacher failed her because of the essay she submitted. Liz leaves the house one last time and allows the father and daughter to talk it out. Charlie tells Ellie that if she would have read the essay once, she would know what she was submitting. It was, in fact, the Moby Dick essay that calms Charlie's nerves, which, as it turns out, was written by Ellie when she was in the ninth grade. He states that it was one of the most honest and well-written essays he has ever read. Ely starts to cry on hearing this but is still putting on a tough exterior. She offers to call the ambulance multiple times because she does not want to see her father die. However, he just simply requests her to read the Moby Dick essay for him. After a few rounds of persuasion, she finally starts to read the essay. This gives Charlie enough strength to push himself off the couch and onto his two feet. With great effort, he walks towards his daughter and stands face to face with her, just like she has commanded him to do on their first meeting to prove his love for her. This act proved how much his daughter meant to him. He feels free and allows his spirit to leave his body, 